Al Trump would put it. You know, some things are well said that way. What Obama's proposing is illegal and stupid in plain English. I can summarize two hours and 40 minutes of live radio. What Obama is proposing is illegal and stupid to make it very simple. But if you want to dance on the head of a pin with me, go ahead, my friends. Let's dance. Let's dance. Larry on WMAC in Georgia. Go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Yes, uh, Dr. Savage. I'm sure you're familiar with the HIPAA laws, correct? What's the point? Okay, the point is that Obama is, by requesting that the FBI collect medical information on mental patients, he's in violation of the HIPAA laws because medical profession cannot pass that information along to law enforcement without a uh, warrant or a subpoena. And That's he's ordering correct, them to violate the law. That's correct. But when has that ever stopped him? It hasn't stopped him in the past, but it's the point that the public's got to become familiar with the fact that he's uh, willing to bypass the law to get uh, what he wants. Yes, this is nothing new. He is going to use the FBI and the, and the therapeutic professions to violate patient confidentiality, but Obamacare has already violated patient confidentiality, as you well know. There's a massive data breach on patient confidentiality as a result of Obamacare. I think we all know that. You ask any doctor about that, uh, and you will see that that is true. But this law that he wants to pass, these executive uh, laws, so to speak, which go against the Constitution, includes a gun ban for some Social Security beneficiaries as well. Are you aware of that, Larry? I am, and that's what worries me. You know, when is Congress going to take action to stop this? Did you hear my guest in the first hour, Congressman Culberson, who controls the purse strings of the Justice Department? No, I did not. Oh, well, he actually controls the purse strings. He's a Republican from Texas. He's a friend of mine because I have no representation in California. All I have are these Harridans called Boxer and Feinstein. I have no representation in California. It's all left-wing fanatics. I had to go to Texas to find a congressman. Congressman Culberson was appointed to the head of the uh, Finance Committee. He controls the purse strings for all of the federal government. Every a request for funds goes through him, and he said he's cutting them off. He sent Loretta Lynch a note today that he's cutting off her funds if she wants to enact any of this. I'm going to replay that tomorrow. I don't think you want to miss that, but thanks for the call. WLYV Radio. Alex, go ahead, please. What's your point? Dr. Savage, thank you. Um, I thought your comment about what's looking at the president's eyes and seeing this darkness, this evil that's going on, and my background's in psychiatric social work, and so I've been brought up in the psychiatric fields, but I have seen exactly the thing that you're talking about. So it looked to me like a demonic possession. It actually is, Dr. Savage. I mean, it's... It's a lot of that. I wasn't. I wasn't saying it just to be cute and to be antagonistic. When this man is slurping on a cone in Hawaii, or uh, in Martha's Vineyard with the millionaires and billionaires, and he's relaxed, he looks like a normal human. Whenever he comes out like a vampire and attacks the middle class, as he did today, especially the white middle class heterosexual Christian, as he did today, he looks demonic. It's in fact what's behind the look in that eyes. I, I've heard the voices from people. And it's not like psychotic break voices. It's demonic voices that to the point that you can hardly form words when you hear it. It's bad. But did you see how he rambled on and on and quoted him? He mentioned himself 71 times in a policy speech aimed at controlling violence through guns. It was all about him. But did you see how he rambled on and on and on? Did you see him? Uh, did you see his just did you actually watch the speech? I didn't. I, I, I have a restaurant, and I'm constantly making stuff. And it's no, no, I, I watched it, and I had to turn it off because it was, it was like watching The Shining. It was like watching a movie about demonic possession. The man changes form. As he gives these speeches, he relishes it so much, he can almost not control himself. And his eyes become, as we are saying, demonic. They're the eyes of a possessed individual. So, I, I mean, I've made my point over and over again. I don't have to repeat it over and over again. What kind of food do you serve in the restaurant? That, now you got my attention. Ravioli's got the best veal, homemade gelato ice creams. It's called wait, wait, are you tell, so it's an Ita you're an Italian restaurant owner? Is, is, it a, is it an Italian restaurant? Yeah, it's all old-fashioned. It's, you know, 15 table. But I make where, my, where, are, where are you? What state? You're in what state? It's in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I think when I retire, I'll come down there for a, for a, a dinner. 
I'm, 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 when I say Italian food, I'm a red sauce guy. I'm not into a fancy meals. I could do without fancy. I grew up in New York where spaghetti was about, you know, $2 a plate with, with meatballs and this marinara sauce that you could put your arm in. It was so thick. Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett. We got a little stage. Hey, I you, love wait, you. Say, what, you entertain Frank Sinatra and Tony Bennett? Voices out there that are trying to wake the public up. Well, uh, Alex, hold it. You, you lost me here. Did you say that Sinatra and Bennett ate there? And they're all beginning. Uh, hold it. Wait, so, da, whoa, whoa, whoa. Look, I'm not going to hang up. Alex, you got to hear me. I'm interested. Did you say that Al did you say that those guys ate in your restaurant? Which guys? The Sinatra and Bennett. Sinatra's pilot flew him around, uh, and I met Tony Bennett when he was here, but they didn't come to the restaurant. Sinatra's pilot was going to bring him here. His name was Tony Takis, but he went to Chicago, and they don't like to come to Fort Wayne. But he did sign a picture before he died. And Yeah, but Fort, it's funny. You know, you're saying you're in Fort Wayne, Indiana, right? Fort Wayne, Indiana. Do you remember the movie <laughs> Goodfellas? Uh, remember the movie Goodfellas? But it takes, one of the scenes takes place in a, in a little uh, grocery in a place like that. Isn't that right? To a, to a great time. I mean, it's, listen. <laughs> okay, we're not communicating very well. I don't think he wants to hear me. This reminds me of my mother saying when people get older, it's not that they, their hearing goes bad. She said they hear what they want to hear. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm thinking of Scorsese's mother playing the mother in that deli scene in the back where they really control the entire industry of crime in America, these little guys with the aprons on. <laughs> All right, my friend, I won't ask for your address to send you a book because uh, it's a secret that I know you want to keep. That's <laughs> the goal. Ooh, I got such a wonderful audience. And the man was in psychiatric. Uh, he's probably around a lot of people who are like that. He knows what the demonic possession looks like when you got the person on the rack with the vice around their head. He sees the eyes that change, you know, if you watch too many movies. W, I got such wonderful callers, I got to tell you. I haven't taken one from my home city of San Francisco. So let's go to KSFO. I love KSFO. All you infidels in San Francisco and Oakland and San Jose and Marin County, all of you poor people without any political representation, I'm so glad to be here for you every day. <laughs> we don't have a congresswoman. We don't have a congressman. We have zero representation in the most demonically one-party fascistic state in the United States of America. It's ruled with an iron high heel. So let's go to KSFO. Tom, from KSFO, what's on your mind, Tom? Yeah, Obama wants to drive gun retailers out of business with this, Michael. Well, how would this drive gun retailers out of business? Because in San Francisco, they drove them out last last year. The last one was driven out, wasn't he, by the nuts here? Yeah. Well... If they, if they now have to have federal licenses to sell guns, he's going to tie them up in a red tape. They can't get a license. They can't sell guns. Same thing they did with the IRS and the conservatives. Okay, good point. Now, in the third hour, we have stations like KSFO in San Francisco, KLIF in Dallas, FNC in Raleigh, DRC in Hartford, FTL in West Palm Beach, KBET in Las Vegas, BOB in Jacksonville, GDJ Albany, uh, New York, FTW, Mobile, Alabama, Lexington, Kentucky, VLK, VNN in Huntsville. We have all of you, and we never hear from you. And we're going to try and make uh, the third hour more friendly to all of these wonderful, wonderful stations around America. Back in a moment on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth and financial future. Call 1-800-289-2680. direct you to a statement that one picture is worth a thousand words. Go to the Drudge Report and take a look at the picture that the Drudge Report caught of the president crying during his uh, gun grab speech today. And tell me if that's the face of a sane individual. Just look at it at your leisure. Drudge Report. Tears for fears. He broke into tears. And I said that he broke into tears today, not because he was concerned so much with his emotions about the victims, I think, but because, like Dracula, I call him Count Obamula, a vampire who drinks the blood of the Constitution one sip at a time. I admit that that's quite Victorian in its overreach. But then again, I'm a Victorian kind of guy in some ways. But I don't think he was weeping uh, out of sadness. I think he was weeping for joy. 
that finally he could sink his fangs into the heart of the white heterosexual middle class Christian community itself. Because again, I will make this the issue that I think it has to be. Who do you think this set of laws is aimed at? Everything in this country is broken down by racial metrics. This is how politics runs in America. They know the breakdown. Everything that they say or do, before they say or do it, they know like through focus groups, analysis, which group is going to respond positively, which group or groups will respond the other way. And so they know that the number one group that will respond negatively to this is the number one group they're aiming it at, which is the white male that I mentioned. Notice there was no outcry from any other community. Why was there no outcry from any other community? I didn't see the gangs of Baltimore that burnt the city half to the ground come out and say, oh, no, we're not going to go for this because they have illegal guns. All the gangs that chase the police down the streets, they're not going to be affected by this. They don't go to psychiatrists. They're not going to be reported to the FBI. They're not worried about licensed gun dealers. They just go buy them wherever they want to. So it's not aimed at them or the rabble in the streets of Ferguson. I didn't hear them rioting today. Did you hear Black Lives Matter screaming today about this law? How come? How come? I'll leave you with that thought. Why did Black Lives Matter not scream and yell and threaten everybody with Obama's laws today or is the attempt to go around the law, really? Why? Why is the outcry only amongst white males? I'll let you figure that out. And once you figure it out, you'll come to understand what we are going through and that this is just the beginning of a long, rough year, a really rough year. So get your life vests on.